Hi, and welcome to Just One More Cookie, a podcast about two sisters' journey toward complete health and wellness. We definitely don't have it all figured out, and we're still in the thick of it, but we are enjoying the ride. We'd love for you to come and join us for Just One More Cookie. Hi, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just One More Cookie. My name is Amy. And I'm Abby. And we are so excited for you to join us for episode 13 of season one. Guys, um, we talked about this before, which you probably forgot, but we only have a few more episodes in this season. Um, We're trying to prepare you ahead of time because we know that you're loving us because we're loving you. Um, But we only have a few more episodes left in this season. And during our downtime, we're going to be doing a lot more brainstorming, a lot more um, getting ready for season two, which we are going to be doing at the beginning of 2021. Um, But we have already planned out the rest of our episodes and we have a lot of great content coming for you guys. And some of it is from suggestions that you've given us. Others are still from conversations that we've been having, issues we've been going through, people we've been meeting. Um, We're just really excited about it. And uh, one of the things that we've been kind of pumped about is sharing our favorites. Um, Right now it's favorite food, but it might evolve because, hey, we're evolving and we want you to evolve with us. So today I am going to talk about a full website because I couldn't essentially just pick a food today. I am going to give you a website that is connected to a cookbook that is absolute gold. And I'm going to put the link in the notes, whether you are watching this on YouTube or you are um, or you are listening to it on a podcast platform, it will be in the notes. But the website is called Lily Eats and Tells. Okay, now here's why it's so great. What Lily, I don't know if her name is Lily, but (laughs) she has an, an IG page, the same under the same name, Lily Eats and Tells. And then she has a cookbook that she's that she's done already and she's coming out with another cookbook. And if you are somebody who counts your macros, she's very macro friendly. And when I say count your macros, for those of you who don't know, it just means that you are being mindful of the percentages of fat, protein, and carbohydrates that you're eating every single day. So you know you're like, you're doing 30, 30, 42, 30% carbs, 30% fat, 42% protein. So she's- That's more than 100%. Well- that's 102 <laughs> percent. In case so, you're keeping track, <laughs> I wasn't. As you Those can tell, macros are inaccurate. <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. Um, I'm not good at math, and my my 10th grade math teacher, geometry teacher, told my mom at a parent teacher conference that it was okay that I was bad at math because I was a woman. <laughs> and. I have. How old was this teacher? He was quite old. <laughs> this, this is obviously before um, the Me Too movement and a lot of that. But the Did point he is, tell you that you could just excel at home ec and that's all you needed. <laughs> no, but I didn't excel at that either. So, um, to sum it all up, I don't care. You get the point. The percentages need to add up to hundred. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Though. Of course. But anyways, back to Lily Eats and Tells. So this is why I really like her. It's she takes, um, she makes recipes very easy to make. So you're not getting like 50 things from the grocery store, which I already hate. But everything that she tells you to get is like super simple. She's the one that does the crunch wraps that I've told you guys about millions of times. She has a bunch of the crunch wrap recipes in the actual cookbook itself. The cookbook's a little pricey. I think it's like $75, but she'll run sales on them. But um, one of the things that I love in her cookbook, she has this um, low carb chicken salad um, to make chicken salad. You can make chicken salad wraps, chicken salad. I put them on like long pieces of romaine lettuce. So I make like a lettuce wrap with them and roll them up. It is so, so fresh and delicious and it's easy to make from a person who doesn't like to, I don't want to stay in the kitchen for hours. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make something new every day. So all of her, um, all of her recipes are um, for bulk recipes and it's easy stuff and it's just so good. And she has like, one of them was like low carb chili um, that I tried that was delicious. She has a lot of soups. Um, that you can make that are really simple. 
Um, she does casseroles, which I'm not like a huge casserole person, but she does a lot of casseroles. I'm just saying everything that I have tasted of hers is that I've made is so good um, and easily repeatable. So if you're frustrated and you think I could just grill chicken this week, or I could just have I mean, I could just have rice and a cup of broccoli every day, but I want variety and I want something that has a whole lot of flavor. Um, she is amazing. And on her, um, on her Instagram, she shares so many like food tips that you can use. Um, she also has this amazing protein shake that she makes and she shows you how to make it like a milkshake. Like literally she, and the way that she does it, People follow her just because she takes pictures of this milkshake, um, but it's a protein shake. But she tells you all the things that you need to put in. Like she has this secret, like you're supposed to put xanthan gum. If you put xanthan gum, I'm not probably not saying it right, but you can put that into the shake and it gives it a thicker consistency like a milkshake. Um, so she's like really big into, I let, this is her, her, like tagline, she loves to eat and she loves to count her macros and be healthy, but she doesn't want to lose out on taste. So, um, my suggestion, go to her website. She has a whole host of recipes that you can do for free. You don't even need to buy the cookbook. Most of the stuff that I've done is for free. Um, but if you try a recipe, let us know. Um, especially if it's one I haven't mentioned here, because I'm looking for other people who have tried her other recipes because they are delicious. That sounds good. I'll yeah. Have to check it out. Especially since I don't like to cook and I like easy stuff. So the least amount of ingredients, the better. So yeah. And it's super amazing. simple. Yeah. And you have to check out her and she has all the crunch wraps on there, like the Cuban crunch wrap, the Turkey sandwich crunch wrap, all of them. I do love wraps. I do wraps for lunch at work every day. They're amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's get into today's topic. So, um, we actually were talking about this and I admittedly um, was not originally sold on this topic because I didn't know, I didn't think we would be able to make a whole episode of it, but we did discover some interesting things and we are going to bring somebody on who can give us even more insight on this topic. But uh, we were talking about how as we age, our health journey looks different for us and that uh, can sometimes be difficult to navigate. I know, especially when I turned, so when I started losing weight, I think I was probably maybe like 26, 27. I don't remember, but I was in my twenties. And I feel like when I turned 30, it was almost like my whole body fell apart. Thirties were so much more difficult than twenties. It was harder for me to lose weight. I felt like my body was just not it didn't have the energy that it used to have. So I think that, you know, just, I mean, 30 was rough. What's going to happen when I get 40? I mean, it's coming up. <laughs> am I going to, am I going to fall apart even more? So I think that it is important for us to kind of look to that and especially looking ahead, you know, what am I going to, um, what obstacles am I going to find in these different stages of my life and how do I overcome them? Yeah. Uh, and another thing, when I was just looking at the general demographics of who listens to this podcast, I thought it was so interesting because what I can do with the program that I use, it just shows the age range of the people who are listening to the podcast. So, well, first of all, it's all over the place, but the, the majority is either young or old. It's like in the 40s, 50s range, and then in the 20s, 30s, well, I guess that's all the ages. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say those are right next to each other. Let me be a little bit more specific. <laughs> Once again, the introduction of numbers is where my downfall is. <laughs> you are proving this teacher right. <laughs> I know. It's just numbers in general. It's like when I used to work at Dairy Queen and I had to get changed. I was just there, like, okay, maybe say something to them while you're making sure this is exact change. <laughs> um, but anyways, okay, so. That was all the numbers. So what I'm really trying to say is <laughs> it was like the, I think it was the fifties age, age range, fifties age range that was higher and the thirties. So it was like the thirties and the fifties, right? With like other ages sprinkled in between. And I thought that's a, that's a wide range. Like the, I'm in my thirties. 
So I can imagine that, like you just said, I understand the difference between my health from 20s to 30s and how I'm like, my body really did change when I turned 30. And then from what I have heard from other, specifically women who have talked about as they age, that the health journey gets more and more difficult or just different, you know? So my thought was, I want to be able to speak to a larger age range and talk about how can we navigate the different ages and how can we anticipate what's going to happen when we get to um, our thirties or our forties or our fifties. And I really wanted to make sure that we brought a professional in here who can speak to specifically the health and the fitness side um, to talk about what kind of things that we might have to overcome, what kind of, even what's going on in our mind, you know, because I think sometimes as we get older, when it gets harder, that's when it becomes easier just to give up and just to say, well, I'm old, but you don't have to be old and be in pain. You know, you don't have to be old and rush the disintegration process of your body, right? Because it's like, the goal is not to be in a nursing home. The goal is not to be in a wheelchair or not able to get around. Like you should want vitality. You should want to feel good no matter what the age is. Um, and I believe that there are ways that you can handle this health journey, um, even though it might be different or more difficult or um, it might take longer. But I feel like there's always a way to be improving your body. There's never, There should never be a time where we just look at our body and our lives and say, well, time to give up. Because if it's time to give up, then it's, then, then you, it's time to die, you know, <laughs> which... Which becomes a really very morbid. Yeah, it's a very it's very <laughs> morbid, but th but it's true. I think sometimes mm -hmm. people just when you give up on your health, it's almost like now you're just putting on the timer of life to say, well, now I'm just going to wait to die. And what a sad way to live. So I really wanted to make sure that we were addressing all of that. Um, and I felt like me and Abigail probably couldn't do the best job of narrowing. The, I mean, we probably could have done a good job, but I wanted to get someone in with some experience and who's trained and who's, who's done a lot of um, working with different age groups so that he can give us his insight. So as we said at the beginning of the episode, we have a very special guest today, and I am so excited to have him on because I am just a huge believer of um, meeting people that come into your life that add a lot of value. And it's so funny. Um, we met via social media, which is rare to find somebody that you meet on social media and then uh, end up establishing a genuine relationship with them. Um, but we met on social media and have shared value in what we both do as a, as a career choice. And I've met a lot of trainers in my day. And I've met a lot of people who work in the health and fitness field. And I can honestly say that my friend Shahid, he is different um, in so many beautiful ways. And I'm excited for him to share that with, with you. But I think one of the things that makes him so special is that he is very knowledgeable about what he does. You can tell that he's passionate about what he does. But abundantly and over all of that, he truly genuinely cares about people. And I have had the opportunity and still have the opportunity to be trained by him to do his program. First of all, it works. Um, but second of all, like he cares, he knows, he's watching. Um, and that those are valuable qualities when we're talking about someone that's working in the health and fitness field. He's definitely not just in it just to do it. Um, so Shahid, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to pick your brain a little bit. And we did, we already did talked about um, some of the difficulties that can come when you are certain ages on the health and fitness field. And we want to get your expertise and your feedback so we can just have this conversation so we can help a lot of people. So I'm going to um, give you the floor because I want you to tell us who you are, how long have you been training and why training? Why did you choose the health and fitness field? I appreciate that introductory. That, that, that was a great intro. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, my name is Shahid. Like you said, uh, originally I'm from uh, Harlem, New York. All right. Um, right now, I currently reside in Raleigh, North Carolina. All right. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur going on four and a half years. I've been a personal trainer and an accountability coach going on five years. All right. Um, this is my passion. This is what I love to do. Uh, the reason why I chose, well, I, I didn't even choose this this field <laughs> like uh 
ever since I was young, you know, back in elementary, uh, middle and high school, and some of college, I just played basketball. You know, that was that will always be my first love. And um, unfortunately, I didn't take advantage advantages of uh, certain opportunities I had. Um, now, whether that is for maybe purposes that, you know, I didn't necessarily believe in myself um, or maybe, you know, I just didn't think I could do it. Who knows? You know, um, but it was a uh, it was a very rough time for me because basketball was the only thing that I knew. It was the only thing that I felt like in my mind I was good at. And um, especially being from where I was from, you know, usually if you don't play sports, then you're probably in the streets, you know. And I remember um, I had the opportunity um, to uh, to uh, to work out this gentleman, which he had previously seen me in the gym. And he just wanted me to show him everything that I was doing previously. And at the time, I didn't see this training. I just figured you're going to pay me to show you what I just did. One plus one equals two. All right, that's easy. <laughs> All right, cool. uh, so um, so uh, we wound up scheduling up an appointment, right? At the time, it's not an appointment to me. At the time, we're just meeting up to go to the gym, right? Um, so I go ahead and I show him the workout, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally assuming that, you know, he can do like a squat, he can do a plank, he should be able to do a push up, right? And when I tell you, it took him about eight to nine minutes to knock out like five push ups. It was crazy. I've never, at, up until that point in time, I've never been so aggravated in my life, right? I'm going to tell you why, why I was so aggravated. I was so aggravated because he couldn't get it done. And I couldn't understand or comprehend how couldn't this man get five push-ups. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, now, I've been, uh, I've been in managerial um, status ever since I was 16 years old. So I think I have pretty good patience, right? But he worked all of them, literally about ten minutes, and uh, I realized that um, I realized he was he was like legit, really putting a hundred percent effort. And I remember when he got the last push up in, and um, I remember the, the the look on his face. And um, afterwards, you know, he 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 didn't cry, but he started to tear up. And he said, he said, "Listen, Shahid, I really appreciate you for believing in me." Um, I had so many people count me out and he's telling me like all of these intimate things. And in my head, I'm like, what the hell is he talking? We, we just did uh, push-ups. Like I didn't realize, I did not realize what I was just witnessing was a breakthrough. And, and afterwards we left, mind you, mind you, the whole workout was about, he did like five squats and five push-ups, but it wasn't the the physical work that we produce it was mostly the mentality that was that was uh being produced and i said to myself i was like damn i i think i i think i just had like a positive impact on him. um and, and 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 i remember at at that moment it was such a feeling of relief it was such a feeling of desire and it was so positive that I felt as though, damn, I could, I, I think at that time, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, the reason why I say, um, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing is because for so long, I knew that I was supposed to be doing basketball. That's what I knew. I knew in my blood, I knew in my, my sweat, my tears that I knew I was supposed to be doing basketball. So um, having a thought, or having an idea that you know basketball may not be my ultimate outlet was a little scary because it's something that I've 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 known for such a long time um, ever since I was born and um, I wound up you know we wound up training wound up training together and we wound up actually you know mapping out his goals and um, you know just seeing like different things that he wanted to do with his body and um, man it, it he 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 gave me the opportunity that I didn't even realize that I had. Um, so after that, I started actually taking it serious and I wound up getting my certification. Um, and then uh, I know that with the certification, when it comes to training, there can be no training if you don't have your nutrition in order. So I wound up getting my nutrition license and then just branching out into other things like yoga, Pilates, and uh, things to that nature. And just, uh, you know, trying to do my best 
at, you know, just providing as much value as I can, you know. Um, but ultimately, you know, I chose this profession because it allows me to make a positive impact on others. Even in a group setting, I'm able to impact people individually, you know, and vice versa because they impact me as well. All right. So let's talk about um, so we can apply kind of to this gentleman and then people in general. What do you find when you have somebody that comes to you and they are at the beginning of their journey? And let's say they have no background with being healthy at all. So they're either very overweight or they have multiple health problems due to the way that they've been living their life. What do you find is the most difficult thing and the most difficult hurdle for them to get over or for you as you are training them? Um, so that question, it, it varies in the answer. Um, generally, when I, whenever I'm doing a consultation with a, with a, with a potential client, um, I generally ask, where do you think that uh, most of the focus is going to be needed at? It's from, from, from my part. Right. And I'll put that in the three categories. So I'll put that in the physical aspect, the training regiment, right? Working out. I'll put that in the nutrition as far as okay, macros, making sure that we get in the protein content, fat and carbs, or is it the mental aspect? And for the most part, um, a lot of people have problems with the mental aspect of it. Um, whether that is having a negative in a in inner circle. Um, whether that is, you know, society telling them that they can't have the body that they imagine ultimately, um, or whether it's just their own their own negative guilt about them allowing themselves to even get to this point. So most usually people pick the the, the mentality aspect. Usually, mm -hmm. that's interesting because I think like the the part that most people would struggle with the most would be like the nutrition. That's interesting. But let me ask you this, mm -hmm. and you can get, if, if you were to envision the answer to this question, think of me. Okay. What's the most difficult part of somebody that you are helping that's been on the health journey for a while? Um, we all know the saying, you can't, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? Not necessarily calling you old, nor a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do believe that sometimes, okay, because you're so used to this style of training, right? Um, you may, you may, uh, you may be apprehensive to any other style of training because it's gotten your results. Um, now one of the things about it is, for instance, let's take somebody who generally uses, I know generally you usually use CrossFit, right? Okay. CrossFit has a lot of benefits, right? But if you've been doing this same style of training for, let's just say, six months to a year, your body is used to it. So you need something to shock your body, right? So that's not necessarily, you know, going from zero to 100 Monday through Sunday, because you can literally wear out your body, you know? As much as we break down our body, we have to work even faster to recover and build it back up, right? Um, so that includes things like yoga, um, meditation, ice, heat, just making sure, um, even even when it comes to um, massages and making sure that you have a chiropractor, those things right there help with recovery because your body is no good to you if you can't use it, you know? Um, so it's just being open-minded about new form of training methods. Do you find that people that you're working with who have um, been on the health journey for a while, that they are consistently resistant to change? Do you feel like just from a trainer standpoint, when you're introducing concepts that go against maybe what they've been taught or what they've already been doing, that it can be difficult for them to transition into something new? Usually that is, that's usually with, uh, with men, usually, usually with men. Um, and the reason being is because <laughs> I think I believe it's just our our pride and our ego, honestly. Um, ultimately, a lot of men, not all of us, but most men don't like that another man has to tell you what to do. But it's not about me telling you what to do. I'm only here to aid and guide you. That's it. You know, um, I think, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us feel as though, oh, my manhood is being challenged. I, I have a coach. And there's things that my coach say that I don't necessarily agree with. And then there's things that my coach say that I do agree with. 
unless it's going to cause me bodily harm or it's against my religion, that'd be the only thing that I won't do. You know, um, I remember uh, it was a supplement that I had to have and I couldn't take the supplement because um, a key ingredient that he had was was against what I could take. So I didn't I didn't take it. I informed him of that and we found a, a, a different outlet, you know. Um, but, you know, sometimes I may get guys who uh, who, you know, they they they, they want to bump heads kind of like, you know, I'm more alpha or I'm more macho than you. But it but two alphas can exist. You know, um, I think, you know, we 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 put it to where is uh, two alphas can exist. You know, Amy, I would say that you're an alpha woman and we can coexist with each other. You know, um, when, when it comes to women, it's, I, I think I've done a better job with just understanding. Now, again, I, I don't know what it's like to be a woman, right? So when it's that time of the month or when you are having um, problems with the hormones, I don't, I don't necessarily understand, but I can respect that because you are a woman and these are bodily things that you're gonna go through, you know? Um, and I think, you know, just having empathy, you know, um, empathy is very really important because, you know, it allows us to connect in that level, you know. Um, for instance, you know, I had a client who uh, had a client who, you know, unfortunately, she had a uh, she had a she had a disease where, you know, it pretty much it was a real big challenge when it comes to losing weight, you know. Um, so it was just some things that we had to make sure we assess and we remember that we're going to continue with the goals. But let's remember that we have these hurdles that we're going to have to get through. So you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to be patient. How do you handle, because we do have, like Amy had said, we have some people in the demographic that are women that are in their 50s mm -hmm. and, you know, past menopause. So I know that there are a lot of issues with women and their hormones. And I know it's very difficult for women to lose weight, especially after menopause. And they deal with a lot of, you know, uh, stomach fat, that's where they tend to carry it, which we all know is more unhealthy. So how do you help somebody, a woman that is past menopause and comes to you in that state? So what is your it, strategy? Uh, so, um, so of course, you know, we always want to make sure that we establish some kind of connection because we have to build rapport, right? Um, find out what kind of supplements they, they have been taken or are willing to take um, most 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 clients that I do that I do have when I come across that problem they have some kind of supplementation that they're already taking um, and a lot of uh, the supplementation that they're taking um, usually has a lot to do with uh, their weight right um, so you know if we are able to get their weight under control you know we can easily make ten tablets become five or you know eight tablets become three. Um, so, you know, again, man, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's really challenging, but you definitely have to make sure that you practice your patience. Um, and, uh, you know, nutrition is definitely a big thing. So we, we really have to like pinpoint, you know, the nutrition and make sure that our activity level is, 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 is sufficient enough that we can make a change. You know, um, I think one of the, one of the biggest things that we just have to make sure is just that constant, constant uh, mentality of being positive, because it can, it can get a little overwhelming when you feel like, man, I've been putting in work for four or five weeks and I only lost three pounds. I mean, but you have to think about how much, how much work you had to put in to get those three pounds. So if you're able to lose three pounds with going up against every spacing. I mean that's 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 such that's such a, a a big win for you. You know, I understand that you know you, you have to almost fight for any and everything that you have. This is no different. You know, you just got to be willing to make sure that you go through it. You know, and I think you know social media is is isn't uh isn't necessarily good in that aspect because you know they feel like uh they put it as though you can lose all this weight overnight, no matter what condition or no matter what point in your life you're at. You know, so. When when you're talking about being any age, any health condition, have you ever come across somebody and thought um, it's not possible? Like in order for them, like they're they are so declined in health or they're so far gone, mm -hmm. there's no point. Have you ever had that experience or saw someone like that? 
No, I have not. And why? What? The reason why I believe I have not because it's no way that I'm. It's it's no situation, and when I say situation, I mean there's no consultation that I ever go into that I think that I can't help this person. Mm. No, it's it's no kind of situation. So mentally, I won't even allow myself to get there, right? Um, now I do remember uh, one of my biggest, one of my biggest, one of my biggest clients. Um, she was around, she was around four fifty five, and um, she had been this way for a for a very long time, you know. Um, and you look at the family, and you know every everybody's the same size. Um, so I knew that that was going to be such a mental hurdle that she was going to have to get past, you know. Um, and it was even to a point where, you know, she felt guilty about losing weight because she didn't look like the rest of her family, you know? So when she would go to certain events, she would feel as though they would outcast her, you know? Um, which, which, which it, it sucks and, and, and it is painful because, you know, you have love for these individuals that's giving you the cold shoulder, you know? Why are you gonna give somebody the cold shoulder when the only thing that they're doing is better in their life, you know? So, um, and you know, we, we, Amy and I were talking about this early this week, having a support system, which is definitely going to be in the book, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just so important, man. But, but, but no, to answer your question, Amy, I've never ran into a problem where I didn't think that I could be part of the solution. I feel like the stigma around the gym is when people go to the gym, there are people in their twenties and thirties, skinny with these, you know, cute little spandex shorts and sports bras, and everybody's just going there for like hookup spots. How do you handle people that come in with that anxiety when they first get there and they think, you know, maybe I am 50 or maybe I'm 60 and I having knee problems or whatever, or I'm grossly overweight and I don't want to go there and be judged. So how do you handle that as a trainer and how do you address those issues? So most most of the time, um, you know, I, I, I just go ahead and tell them like, I do fast cardio, right? Um, so for those of you that don't know what fast cardio is, it's when you wake up on an empty stomach and you go do some kind of cardio, right? Whether that that's the elliptical, treadmill, the cycling, stairmaster, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> now, when I go, and I'm doing this at like three o'clock in the morning. Now, of course, you know, we've been in a pandemic, so I haven't been able to go to an actual gym to do my fast cardio. But anytime I was going to the gym to do my fast cardio, as soon as I walk through the door, the average age range of people that I see are are like 50, 60 years old, you know? And these are these are senior citizens, you know? And I just look at that and I just say, I'm complaining about my leg. I may be complaining about my arm. I may be complaining about, I don't feel like doing this workout right now. Mind you, this person who is twice my age, maybe even three times my age, isn't making any excuses. I'm pretty sure that they can complain about something or another, but they're not, you know? And that always resonates with them because it's like, wow, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I can do it. I'm not the only one in that boat. You know, um, and usually when I do get my, my my older clients, they're like, I know what I want. I want it now. What do I have to do to get there? You know, um, so it's 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 straightforward with them. And that's something that I, I really enjoy, you know, um, because that that's that's like a in a perfect world. That's exactly what I want to know. Boom, A, B and C. And this is exactly how we're going to get the D, you know, um, so, uh, you know, just remembering that, you know, it's going to be some habits that we may have to break. We may have to break those habits, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you may come across where, you know, it, it feels like you guys are going head to head because, you know, as an elderly person, they may feel as though, what is this young person going to tell me? It's not about what is this young person going to tell me, but if I recall, you inquired about my services. So... <laughs> allow just 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 allow me to do what i'm here to do just trust me you know um so it 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 is it's really it makes me happy when i'm when when i am tra training elderly people because they 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 appreciate they appreciate so much they appreciate so much you know and it just reminds me of how much more we should be 
appreciative to those things as well. From your experience of dealing with different age groups, um, can you tell me how is the health and fitness journey different for the different age groups, like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? And how do you handle those different challenges? Because we were talking at the beginning, like both of us from our 20s to 30s, our body changed yeah. and everything changed, mm -hmm. right? So thus then the training had to change. From your experience and your studies and what you know about the body, how specifically, how does the body, how is the training process changing with every decade and how are you navigating those challenges? Um, so you have to remember that, um, you know, when you're young, when you're, when you're a teenager, when you're in your twenties, you know, it's, you could eat whatever you want, right? And you could probably maybe burn half it out off, maybe all of it off. Who knows? Um, once you start reaching, you know, later 20 going into your 30s, you got to realize like, OK, you know, my same eating patterns from the 20s that may have been in a negative aspect of it. I can't continue to bring that in the 30s because it's, 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 it's not going to get me anywhere if I even make it to 40. Right. And then once we go another decade going into the 40s, it's like, OK, not only do we need to be make sure that we're mindful of the nutrition, but we need to make sure that we're being mindful of the recovery. And I really think that you should really start start that when you're around 20, because when you're around 20, it makes it a whole lot easier when you're 30 and when you're 40, right? One of the things for me, and I realized that, you know, I did this maybe about, probably about maybe like three years ago. One of the first things that I used to do when I go to the gym, I would never warm up. I go straight in, right? But then you realize when you go straight in, you, that can lead to a lot of injuries. That can lead to you not necessarily, you know, getting a hundred percent of your workout because you know you may be, you may have a lag in injury. Just because you don't feel it right then does not mean that it's not going to come full circle, you know. So doing proper warm ups, you know, actually warming up the joints, you know, actually warming up your body. Um, that's 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 why you know definitely a big component in yoga and you know things like pilates or just meditation you know i know those are usually workouts that men feel like that's a woman thing to do but it's not because any man who feels like yoga is just for women or pilates is just for women i bet you he's never actually did a class himself because if they did they will realize like this class is really working the hell out of me. You know, I remember the, the first time I tried yoga, I was thinking to myself, okay, I see the box. I see the mat, like what, it, like this, this isn't gonna do anything for me. Like I'm, I'm used to hardcore, right? Man, I was, after we finished the last exercise and um, we finished with a, we finished with a, we finished with a bird dog, right? So as I'm doing a bird dog, I'm like, I can't wait till we finish this last rep, right? <laughs> I've realized that, damn, a lot of my training that I'm doing, I'm neglecting a lot of big aspects of my training. When you're doing a bird dog, that's so much core work, right? Um, I couldn't get balanced, right? So I'm working on my stability, right? And then it's just regular functional training, you know? Um, so those are things that, you know, may not necessarily get highlighted in a regular training regimen, you know? So it is, it's so important. And then, you know, once you get up to your, you know, your fifties and your sixties, you know, it's okay to have less, less intensity than you did previously because you, your body has to adapt, you know? Um, again, you know, as long as you're, as long as you're, as long as, you know, your joints are good and you're helping your bone density, you know, you can work out as much as you want to, but you have to remember that, you know, age is going to play a factor, you know, and it's just not just about working out. You have to make sure that your nutrition is right as well as your supplementation that you do as well. So well, I was wondering if you could talk about, first of all, does age have uh, an impact on plateaus and how much? Uh, does age factor into it? And does the solution look different depending on where we're at, either in our health journey or in our age group? So when it comes to plateaus, um, you know, sometimes, yes, the older you get, the more challenging it may be to deadlift 325 or to squat, you know, 315 or whatever the case may be. Um, 
It just comes with age, you know, father time is undefeated and father time will continue to go undefeated. You know, uh, aging is inevitable, right? Um, let's think about it in the aspect of we actually have, we actually have, um, we, 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 we have the graces to actually age, you know, with so many people who lose their life at such a, at such a young age, you know, so appreciate that. Um, but when it comes to plateaus, uh, I mean, it's just so many different ways that you can, that you can, you know, just, just make minor tweaks. So let's just say if I feel like, you know, I'm hitting a, I'm hitting a plateau, right. With my weight loss journey. <clears throat> and let's say that this person main focal point is the number on the scale, right? Okay. If you hit a plateau in your weight loss journey, let's see how your nutrition is, right? Maybe if we take 135 grams of carbs and we may be decrease it down to where it's now under 100 grams, maybe that can do the trick. Because when it's down under 100 grams, that at least should double the intake of carbs that you're going to burn, which is going to burn a lot more fat. You know, um, it can be a plateau like, okay, um, bench pressing, right? Okay, I've been at 315. And I don't exactly know how to how to get past it. Okay, well, let's look at your training regimen, right? Are you somebody who, you know, every time you go to the gym, you know, what's your training split? Okay, why don't we work on a lighter rep, right? So let's say instead of 315, we go ahead and let's just say we do 215. Now, instead of just maxing out 10 reps going full throttle, why don't we take one rep and we focus on the eccentric part of the motion? The eccentric part of the motion is whenever you're you're um you're lowering the movement. So think about a bicep curl, right? At the top you have the peak, and as you're lowering it, that's the eccentric motion. Now, when you see a lot of people, and you can you can you can tie this into any exercise. When you see a lot of people, whenever it comes to lowering the movement, they don't control it. They only focused on putting it back up in the peak contraction. But you're missing so much in that eccentric, and that eccentric is going to help break down the muscles two to three times faster than the concentric and actually peak. You know, um, so it's just minor tweaks that you may not think about because maybe you don't necessarily have the information, or maybe you just, you know, just in the same you know regular training program that you've been doing. You know, even when you think about like like supplementation. You know, um, for instance, you know if Amy and I have been working for four or five weeks. Okay, I'm like, okay, Amy, now I understand your body because you know we've had a month, a month and a week to 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 for me to get used to your body. Now let's go ahead and throw in some supplementation. Okay, boom, let's go ahead and throw in some carnitine. We know that carnitine is gonna help with um with not only weight loss, but it's going to go with burning fat because of the caffeine that it has in it, right? Okay, boom. Now we talk about caffeine. Let's see if we maybe need to add a pre-workout to give you a little more energy. Maybe you feel like, you know what, throughout throughout the day, my energy is lagging. Maybe we need to do some BCAAs because those are amino acids, you know? So it it it, it can uh it can it can get a little overwhelming, but just those minor tweaks can help you in the long run. You just gotta be, you know, willing and patient enough to, okay, let me think about writing down my nutrition, my workouts and things to that nature. That's why, you know, Amy and I always have conversations and, you know, we always say, you know, write down your workouts, write down your workouts because you may go in the gym tomorrow, Abby, and say, you know, I'm going for 185. You might squat it 20 times, right? <laughs> you might go next Monday, right? And you might try 135 and it's feeling heavy as hell. And you're like, damn, what is the difference from now, from last Monday till now. Well, you can go ahead and go in your book and say, okay, boom, I wrote my notes down. You know what? Today, I wasn't feeling good. My stomach was hurting. Last week, my stomach wasn't hurting, you know? Or maybe Amy got me so frustrated that I just had to take my frustration out in the gym and it just gave me an extra, a, a extra gear, you know? So again, you know, it's just important that, you know, you, you try to document any and everything that you can in order to help you in the progression space.
So one of the things that I really find interesting about weight loss in general, or just like staying healthy, right? There's like different motivations. So like when you're in your 20s, especially when you're single, there's a lot of motivation to staying healthy, right? Because it's like, I'm looking for someone, I want to look cute, you know, you're going out more. Then when you get in your 30s, and you're, you know, you're single, and you're still trying to keep it together. Um, But then it's almost like, you can get settled in in life, right? Like maybe you're already married, you have kids, especially from a female's perspective. So the motivation that you might've had when you're younger goes away. So my question is from, from the standpoint of really helping a lot of people at different ages of their lives, how do you help them find? And then what would you suggest to our audience of finding new motivation when it's like, I don't have anyone to impress. I don't really care. And if I'm older, I might just spend a lot of time sitting on my couch and watching TV. What's my motivation? You know, like I'm not going out to the club and I'm not trying to catch anyone's eye and I don't really care if I don't look that great. Where's the motivation that they need or how do they get that motivation to really start something new with their health? Um, So I do believe that each one of us have motivation. I just believe that we have to get in tune with it. I believe everybody has motivation. Um, I believe the, 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 the mom of three doesn't necessarily feel like going to work, but she knows that she has to provide for her kids. Her motivation is her kids, you know? Um, that law student that has a crap load of homework and is tired as hell, her motivation is, okay, I'm gonna get this degree, you know? So I do believe that we all have motivation. We just gotta get in tune with it. Um, When it comes to finding your motivation, I I believe that the motivation is everywhere around, right? Um, Let's say you don't have any kids and you are single, okay? Okay, Um, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Honestly, like, ask yourself, like, am I happy with the reflection I'm seeing? You know? Um, And you can lie to a lot of people, but I don't think you can lie to yourself. Now, you can tell yourself things, but but you you as yourself know (laughs) that it's BS, you know? Um, So I don't think that you can lie to yourself, you know? Um, Helping finding that motivation for clients is, is, is definitely a tough one. It's a tough one because ultimately it has to come from within, you know? Um, that's why, you know, we, 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 we strongly urge about, you know, having a, you know, a great inner circle that's gonna hold you accountable and that's gonna be positive, you know? Because if you have a significant other that is fine with ordering Bojangles on Mondays and, you know, Taco Tuesday and McDonald's <laughs> on Wednesday, ultimately that may not necessarily become of you, but it's a little easier for you to go into that lifestyle, you know? Um, so it's, it's going to take a, a strong minded individual, you know? Um, but again, that's one reason why talking about my virtual gym, uh, that's another reason why it's so important that couples hold each other accountable because mm-hmm. you're less likely to do those kind of things, especially if you have your significant other holding you accountable, you know, at times when I'm weak, she's going to be my rock. At times when she weak, she's weak, I'm gonna be her rock. At times when we're both weak, we're gonna find a damn rock. All right, <laughs> you have to find a rock. All right, um, but that's again, really beautiful. And 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 thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and I say that, and and I don't want the audience to think that I mean that it's about being perfect because it's not. It's just about being consistent. That's it. Amy and I talk about that all the time. It's about consistency. But first, you have to build a foundation to be consistent. I want you to um, talk specifically to somebody who's in this moment of knowing, like, that. I love what you said. Like, we can lie to other people, but you're the one that looks in the mirror and decides, do you like what you see? But that person that's looking in the mirror and maybe thinks, like, I'm too old or I'm too far gone or I'm embarrassed. I don't know where to start you know, all the things that we kind of tell ourselves. um, And I think it gets harder and harder as we age because we kind of think the health and fitness game is for young people or enthusiasts or people who already look good. What would you say would be the first step that they need to take to start their health and fitness journey? I would say the first step would just be, uh, because I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, you've already talked to yourself and said, you know, I need to do this, I need to do that. I would say the first step is just, contacting uh, a trainer or a nutritionist, um, even a therapist, 
even a therapist. Um, and when I say contact, I don't necessarily mean like, you know, this isn't uh, this isn't the nineties. We don't have to go to the yellow pages, right? Um, you have your social media devices. Um, now again, the, the, the fitness industry is um, really saturated that they have, they have a lot of things that they can throw at you. Um, however, I will say that they, there are particular people who the pages kind of talk to you a little bit, right? Um, for instance, Amy, right? You could have chose anyone to train you, but you didn't, you know? Um, so I do believe that, you know, nothing happens by accident and happens by design, right? And I don't believe in coincidences. I honestly just think that it was supposed to happen this way, you know? Um, so I would just say, you know, if you don't necessarily know anybody that's a trainer, or maybe, you know, you have those people who are not into social media, then maybe you can try, you know, a local gym, you know, at, you got to go first and go first just to, just to get the energy, feel the energy, you know, um, that's, that's one of the main reasons why I have the consultations. Yes. I'm going to provide you with the value that I'm coming to with you and to see if you match you match what, you know, ultimately I have to offer, but I'm going for energy, you know, because I honestly feel as though you can get an energy from a person, not just being physically in the room, but just being somewhere around them. So even when I go to somebody's page, I feel like when I can go to Amy's page, I feel like I feel her energy. You know, when I open this, uh, this, this, this folder that Amy sent to me, I automatically seen a picture of her and her glasses smiling at the table. So I, I feel as though that 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 resonated with me that, OK, boom, I, 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 I know Amy's energy. I may have never met her, but I can feel her energy. So I, I, I think that speaks a lot about it. I want to speak to the the idea of hiring a professional. I've been doing this for so long. I've worked with many, many trainers. I love community. Abigail's like an in-home workout. She likes to do her thing. And I know there's people that are like that, right? But I want to specifically talk to people who are like me that want community that, that need professional help. And of course there's that thought of like, oh, if I hire a personal trainer, um, it's going to be so much money. I'm going to be broke by the time it's over and they're not even really going to help me. <laughs> but I feel like from the concept of what we're talking about, this topic, this, the benefit is that a lot of times as we age, our bodies become Rubik's cubes. Me and Abigail talk about this all the time. Like, I don't know. I need, <laughs> to, I need someone. And like, and I'm going to give you a chance to pitch your whole virtual gym, which I think is amazing because we're in a world where people don't, were scared to go to gyms before a pandemic. They didn't want to go, but now you've created something that literally every day you can tune in to a, a, a live workout and it's doable. And you have people at all ranges. One day we were doing exercises literally with a towel and it hurt. <laughs> it was like, we're doing an exercise with a towel and it was like, this is a real workout. But, um, I think there is there is a benefit of getting somebody that's on your side. And I love that you said an accountability coach because you are my accountability coach. And sometimes I hate getting text messages from you. Sometimes I hate that you hold me accountable. But because I've been doing it for so long, I get into I can get into like a lax pattern and like having someone come in that like can give you direction and help you navigate your body. Like I've brain dumped on you so much. Like this is what's going on. I don't know. I need help. And it's like having somebody come in that just like, first of all, tells you you're not crazy, but then gives you feedback, I think is so essential. And the, one of the main reasons why I had you on is I feel like you're doing something different. That's cost efficient. First of all, it's helpful and it gets results because I've gotten results from working with you. So I want you to talk about what you offer your clients and especially your virtual gym. Okay. So, um, definitely, you know, I definitely appreciate all of those, all of those calm words, calm words. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, that, that, that is a misconception, um, as far as it being cost efficient, you know? Um, but again, you know, you just have to, you have to think about you, you are investing in your health, you know, and investing in your health is something that you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't find a discount code on coupon for that, you know? Um, so with the virtual gym, um, I have different tiers, right? I have tier one, two, and three, right? Um, with all of the tiers, you have uh, nine classes that we literally do. We have classes ranging from five o'clock in the morning to uh, eight o'clock at night, 
right? We have at morning classes, afternoon classes, and night classes, right? On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have an option to do three different classes. So it's times when, you know, Amy is on the eight o'clock class and she's already clocked in to the 5 a.m. class and she has clocked into the 3 p.m. class, you know? Um, and I mainly did this not only for my clients, but I did this for myself too, because I want to be held accountable. I want to be held accountable. I know how it is to, you know, be at home and literally stare at the refrigerator, stare at the cabinet. Know that you have those Oreos in the cabinet, even though you shouldn't, and you might hear them calling your name, right? We got to get out of our heads too much, especially during this time, right? Um, a lot of us are doing businesses that's home based. Um, even uh, I, I know, I know only people who I know that's actually at work are you know uh, paramedics, you know, um, like people people that has to be in their office in their job, you know. But for a large majority of us, you know, we're home, so it can be a little challenging, you know, staying on track. And this is a way for all of us to stay on track, all right? Um, and we do everything from hip, tra hip training, hybrid training, cardio, strength training. If you want to know what any of those are, <laughs> just go to my website, mytriplemmm.com, and I'll explain it, all right? Um, tier two, you get everything I that I just mentioned, right? Everything I just mentioned, plus you get the nutritional aspect of it, all right? Now, again, we talk about the nutritional aspect of it. We, we remember that. You can never outwork a bad diet. You can't. There's no way possible. You know how you know how many times you have to. First of all, do you know how many do you know how many calories in one pound of fat? It's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. 3,500. You know how long you would have to run on a treadmill just to get rid of one pound of fat? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's so it's ridiculous. depressing. All right, it, it is depressing. It is very depressing. Right. <laughs> um. So, uh, tier three. Um. Tier three, you get everything. You get the nutrition, you get all access to the classes, as well as you get one individual 30 minute session with me. Now, the reason why I want to highlight the 30 minute session is because all of the classes are 30 minutes. And a lot of people feel as though, and I've ran into this a, a, a lot um, since I've been an entrepreneur. A lot of people say, well, I, I work out longer than 30 minutes. I still have the same response that I had four and a half years ago. Your 30 minutes is different than working out 30 minutes with me. Mm -hmm. Because I know we only have 30 minutes, I have to compact everything into this 30 minutes, right? So your heart rate may be 185. It may be 190. I, I don't recommend it, but that's what it may be because I have to compact everything into 30 minutes. So when you have to compact everything into 30 minutes, it really doesn't feel like 30 minutes. It feels like we've been working out damn near for an hour, hour and a half. You know, but it's fun, you know, um, even when we talk about uh, on Wednesdays, we do this deck of cards, right, where we literally would take a deck of cards, right, 52 cards in a deck, right, and we will work out with it, right. So let's say the hearts represent squats. The clubs may represent curls. The diamonds may represent thrusters and the, the spades may represent jumping jacks. That is something that you already have at home. We're just putting a, putting some more spin to it, you know? So again, it's something that, you know, you just got to constantly be creative, right? And 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 during this pandemic, uh, one thing that I can say is it allowed me to be creative um, from a different standpoint, you know? Um, again, you know, all of the tears that I have are cost efficient, you know? Um, I advertise them on my social media. Um, Instagram at underscore MMM muscles, all right, as well as on Facebook, all right, same, same at name, all right, as well as, you know, on my website. And if, any, and if, and if anybody has any questions or any inquiries, you know, they can always contact me and I'll always respond directly, you know, um, but that was my main thing. Right now, I'm offering a discount to couples. And the reason I'm offering a discount to couples is because I not only want you, but I want your significant other to join you in this as well, because it's important for both of you. You know, nobody. Oh, you should be offering this to singles. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, do you know, I, how, I, hard it, do you know <laughs> how hard it's been? If we're in a pandemic, 
The singles are just sitting at home eating food and gaining weight. Well, well, listen, <laughs> I heard this. Prospects a... are for us to get a, a somebody to come to our house. <laughs> <laughs> You're helping the couples. Forget them. They have each other. <laughs> Let them get fat together. We're struggling. Oh, <laughs> I just had to say that. So you're offering something to couples. Yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm offering a discount to couples um, because it is important that you know you guys hold each other accountable. Of course, I'm going to hold you accountable, but I want you guys to hold each other accountable as well. Um, and it just goes back to you know build a r- r- rapport with clients. You know, um, they spend a we spend a lot of time together. You know, so I get to know you know the kids. I get to know the pets. I get to know you know uh, the colleges they went to. I get to know their parents. So it's just important that you know we we always establish that 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 common ground. You know, and out of all of the clients that I've ever ever had, I can only say I wasn't able to establish that kind of. Uh, rapport with just one person, uh, just one person. Other than that, I've always been able to establish that rapport, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, 98, 98% is pretty good with me. So. Definitely, definitely, definitely check out the website, check out, we're going to, we're going to link all of that in the, in the show notes. And in, um, if you're watching it on YouTube, it'll be in the description. So you can definitely check that out. And here's, here's the main thing. And, and this is something that's so valuable to anyone that's listening. It does not matter what age you are, where you are at it currently in your health condition, what's going on with your body. It is so beneficial to include somebody on your journey that can help you wherever you're at. And one of the main reasons why I had you on, and I already discussed it at the beginning, but I think that what you're doing right now in the virtual world is untapped. So many people aren't doing it. So if you're at home and you're like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to go before the pandemic. I don't want to go after, but I need help. This is such a great opportunity for you to tune in from your, um, you know, from your bedroom and do some, do some workouts. And if you want some more help with your nutrition, if you're like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, um, what to eat. And I definitely don't want to spend $150 a week on a trainer. This is a great opportunity for you. So Shai, thank you so much for putting that together. Um, and for helping people. And thank you for being here with us today. Of course, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. Abby, I appreciate the opportunity of finally meeting you. You know, uh, Amy has told me so many great things about you. So it's finally good to put a, put a, put a, put a uh, face to the name. Yes. Or a name to the face. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you guys so much for being with us today and for tuning in. I hope that you gain some nuggets that you can take with you and apply to your life right now or looking to the future, things that you can put into place to be ready. But again, just want to thank you for enjoying the ride with us today. And just want to remind you to please Uh, If you're wherever, whatever platform you're listening to us or watching us, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, leave us a review, uh, shoot us an email. It's onemorecookiepod at gmail.com. Give us some feedback. Let us know if you have any comments about today's guest or the things that you took away from this. Please let us know. Please continue to give us some love. We love you guys so much. And we will see you next time for another episode of Just One More Cookie.